Welcome to the Clients and Devices video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a client, how to download the agent for that client, how to bulk install of the agent through a GPO, how to multiple select agents and run tasks across those agents, how to set up the client email to ticket bridging, how to create a passive device, and where you can find device reports. First of all, to set up a client, we need to go to the Settings tab. Inside here, go down to Clients and Licensing. In the top right corner, you have a button called New Client. Simply click that, create a new standard client, give the client a name, and fill out all the other information if you wish. Once you've done that, click Save, and fill out a primary point of contact. Again, once you've filled all that, just click Save. Now that that client has been created, if we go back to the Devices list, you now have a client called Edison Cooling. Now to download an agent for this client, we simply need to make sure we have it selected like I have here. Click on New Device. In here we choose the one that we want to install it on, whether it is a Linux, Mac or Windows. For this example, I'll use a Windows. We then download the agent, which is a simple executable file, and then we can run that on any device on that site. Now to run this, all we do is simply install it. The best way to install this on large clients is if we go to the Help tab and go to the Navrisk forums. There is a guide in here that explains how to install it on large sites using an active group policy. Simply use the search deploy and you'll find one here called tips and tricks deploying agent with AD. Here is a step-by-step -step guide on how to use that group policy logon script to install the Navrisk agent across all the sites. Something else you can do with Navrisk is select multiple agents and choose to run remote tasks over them. So you have things such as running a script pack, sending a message down to that client, logging off users, restarting and shutting down of a device, toggle maintenance mode, restarting agents. You can also update the attributes and device roles on a large scale across all selected agents. You can create a scheduled job across all of these agents. And you can also even import and export data from these. To set up the email to ticket bridging, simply go into the settings tab, go down to clients and licensing, and go to edit yourself. Now in here, if we browse down, you'll find that there's a client support email to ticket mapping area. This is where we set up the settings for our mapping. So first of all, you'll want to set up your POP3 email account settings. As you can see in here, I've given the name it's going to use as the sender, where my server is, the server port it's going to use, and the account details, and if I have a certificate, I can use the SSL. Don't forget, you'll also want to set up the permissions so that your email server has permission to relay. Once you've done that, you want to set up some of these other fields. Now the alert recipients means that when an email comes through and gets processed, it also sends an email to these email addresses to let them know. The response email template, we can leave blank and it will use a default one. Otherwise, you can create multiple templates and choose to use them if you wish by typing in the name. And also create a do not reply address, as this will be the auto reply sent back to the client. Now this is how you set up the main settings. However, once you have done that, you'll also want to set up each sub-client as well, however only with a domain name. For instance, if I go to Edison Cooling, the client we just created, down here I'll want to create under the allow mail from domains as aircooling.com. So now when any one of them send an email through, it automatically appends the ticket to the correct client. All the other details such as the POP3 email account, alert recipients, and other details will be inherited from the top. Now you may have noticed when I went to download the previous agent, it also had another option for a passive device as well. A passive device is a way of being able to store all the information for a certain asset on that site. For an example, I filled out all the details as below to use an example of a backroom printer. So this is an HP printer, I know exactly which IP address and all the other details about this device. As you can see, it's now created a new entry into my devices table with a simple grayed out icon. Now to get more details about a device, simply click on the name and you go into the device details page. So just a quick overview about these different tabs. The attributes tab is where you keep all your information and asset tracking. You have all the open tickets on a device and recently closed. You have monitoring settings that you can set specifically for this single device. You have an audit table of which user did what action across this device. You have hardware changes that are recorded. You have an SNMP listening hub. This is optionally installed. The hardware tab, which is a display of all the hardware on the device. A file explorer, which is a way of sending files to and from a device. 
The Event Log tab, which also has a list of Windows Event Logs here, without having to disturb the end user. Information about the operating system and all the services on that system. You can also use this tab to remotely start and stop services. The Performance tab, which is a current view of how our performance is doing on this specific machine. The Console tab is a way of being able to run command shell commands across the device. You also have the option of switching to PowerShell as well. The Software tab is a simple readout of all the software that displays its version, install date, and location. And the Patch Management is just a way of seeing all the missing patches across the device and selecting the ones you want to install now. You can also find device reports by going to the Reports tab, going into the Devices list. You can find several different reports here that are handy for auditing different devices, such as the Device Summary, the Hardware Summary, the Software Licensing Report, or even the Asset Summary many of which you'll find very useful. And that concludes our video.